Now, to make all this possible is S3522, an act of Congress that revives the World War policy known as Lend-Lease. A simple idea. It started in 1941 when President Roosevelt wanted to provide Great Britain with military equipment without getting involved in the war. After the war, the UK paid or was meant to give it back. Assembled Congress, here's the President and his promise to all people fighting aggression. We shall send you, in ever-increasing numbers, ships, planes, tanks, guns. That is our purpose and our pledge. And now today the US is proposing exactly the same thing. Lend-lease for Ukraine. In doing so, billions of dollars in military equipment. The plan is for Ukraine to pay for it or give it back in some shape or form. Adam, too, is the history professor at Columbia University. He joins me from New York. In the 1940s, the idea was, uh, you know, Lend-Lease got round uh, isolationism. Um, why are they using this method this time round? Is it sort of similarly a, 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 a satisfactory fig leaf to get the stuff moving? Yeah, the idea in 1941 was to avoid the embarrassment of loans, which had gone really sour after World War I. And so what you wanted to do was to create a mechanism that at all costs avoided that. And I think this time round as well, this is a congressional initiative. It, in fact, goes back to January before the, the Russian invasion. And I think the idea, as much as anything, is symbolic. It's to revive the famous, the legendary 1941 program. And then essentially the idea here is, I think, to make it as easy as possible so that basically you deliver the equipment to, uh, to Ukraine and then figure out how it's repaid, if it's repaid at all afterwards. That was that is in spirit, really, the continuity also with the 1941 moment. And, and indeed, the act that's just been passed says the president shall establish expedited procedures for the delivery of any defense articles loaned or leased. So, so there's an urgency here. But as you say, this symbolic message of using Lend-Lease will, 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 was not lost on anybody. No, it was dramatic even at the time. In fact, they had to invent a new term because in 1941, early in the year, of course, the United States was not in the war against Germany and the war with Japan hadn't even really begun. Um, and so but America was taking sides. So neutrality never really described America's position. They invented a new term, which was non-belligerence. And it's not even clear to me whether in this war in 2022, that adequately describes what's going on. Because in a sense, America is party to this, and this is Roosevelt's language, by all means short of war. Everything necessary to support Ukraine short of American boots on the ground, NATO troops directly confronting the Russians. It's hugely provocative. In your view, where does that line end? Because I, I asked the NATO Secretary General, I couldn't believe I was even mentioning this sort of idea, but in the event, for example, God forbid, of a, of a short-range nuclear weapon being used, where fallout was to go across to a, a NATO country, Poland or any of the neighbouring countries, would that be an attack on NATO? Would that sort of be the trigger that would get NATO in? Something like that. We don't know, to be honest. We're really in totally unexplored territory. We've not really been in a situation before where the military open, spectacular public defeat of Russia or the Soviet Union was really the goal. In Afghanistan, where we bled the Soviets dry, it was done much more discreetly. In this case, it's really a very direct engagement. And what we do know from history is that a regime that is prone to paranoia, prone to conspiracy theories like the Nazi regime was, used lend -Lease. It was part of the Kasus Belli, ultimately, that justified in Hitler's mind the decision to enter into war with the United States. In the broader picture of World War II, that, of course, in some sense was a godsend. But that would definitely not be, I think, our interpretation of the current moment. We are certainly treading right. a very fine line here. And the Biden administration will be acting very circumspectly, I think, in the details on the ground. The rhetoric is very clear, but on the ground, they're going to be very careful.
So we end up again, uh, how lucky we are to have your interpretation, we end up with this also very difficult position on sanctions, for example, where, you know, they've, the countries involved have to go along with President Putin's cockamamie scheme of two accounts, rubles, shares uh, and transfers. But nobody's prepared to say whether it's legal or not, because that creates difficulties in its own right to keep the gas and, uh, and oil flowing. Just goes to show how deep our entanglement with Russia really was, right? This is not the Cold War of old, where we could easily pull ourselves away, where the entanglements were much, much, much less. We are engaged now in some weird hybrid of Cold War, World War II, off the back of, in the wake of, unprecedented globalization. And so that is going to create these kind of gray zones where no one really knows how to act. And indeed, in Europe, there is going to be a lot of lawyering going on, a lot of PR that's going to be needed to manage this gray zone. And it depends very much on both sides. If the Russians want to turn the screw, if the Europeans, if the Americans want to, you can turn a foggy situation into one that's very black and white very quickly, um, if you are so minded.